is to appear everywhere at once. This is killer. This is all about Beyonce. Now, a, a few years ago, Beyonce actually got hired as the um, as a headliner for Coachella. It was such a big deal because Coachella tends to be rock oriented and frankly, white oriented. So it was a really big deal, particularly Beyonce, again, was at the peak of her powers. Big deal, probably got $7 million. Netflix then recorded a special about her Coachella appearance. She gets the bag from that, as they say. So she got another 10 mil, let's just throw it out there. 10, 12 mil, probably higher for her. Let's say 12 million for the exclusive rights to that recording. Six months or so later, she drops an album called Homecoming. Excellent album, by the way, highly recommend it. A live album called Homecoming, that's a recording of, of the Coachella appearance. And guess what? She's still making money off of that, including from me. Man, her top three, excellent album. So she's making money three ways from one two hour appearance. So that's how you appear everywhere at once. I'm talking to you right now. This will appear on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. It'll also appear on Amazon and other platforms like that. Later on, this could become a podcast. So you could be listening to it. This actually could, could become a chapter or excerpt or a piece of the next book that I do based on my new publishing imprint and of course, my current book, Built From Now, some of this stuff was based on things that I wrote at my ink column over at inkdamonbrown.com. In other words, kind of like the Martha Stewart or the Martha Rules idea, you're doing something once and then you're allowing it to multiply. And Beyonce is excellent at that. I'm trying to be better at that too. So think about that. That's how they make their money multiply. Even with the Kardashians, Kardashians, um, until recently they had the reality TV show, which is how they got their popularity. It just ended, I think about a year ago. But when they were launching, I don't know, Kylie, the younger one, was launching a makeup line, then they'd be showing the makeup line on the reality TV show. So they're literally getting paid to advertise their own startups. Think about that. There's some power in that. How can you leverage that? So number one, already work with what you got. Again, that's the Martha Stewart rule. Number two, you really want to be everywhere at once. So do something once and then multiply it. You want to use what you've got. I have this concept called the cutting room floor. And so I think of like, uh, I don't think they do this anymore because it's all digital, but I think about the old school movies, the editors, because you know, the, the director will film the movie and then it has to go to editing. And then there's an editor, old school at least, who would be in like the dark room, going through each slice, and they might work with the director a little bit, but at the end of the day, the editor is gonna make some of those decisions, at least at least on the offset, and they'll have to figure out what's gonna keep. But if you think about something like the movie Jaws, you know, the movie's like an hour and a half long. I'm sure Steven Spielberg filmed hundreds, hundreds of hours. That's why we have the concept called the director's cut, because the editor will work on it, and then the director years later will say, well, I wanted to add this scene and that scene, right? You think of the Zack Snyder cut of um, of the Justice League movies, which has been like, at least at least on social media, has been such a contentious discussion for like years, because the Zack Snyder cut, who was a director of, of uh, at least two of these movies, never got seen, right? But then there's a special cut that was done by Warner Brothers, the studio, and it's evidently completely different. That's why we have director's cuts, right? But what if there was never a director's cut? What if this stuff was just on the cutting room floor? The same thing happens with what we create as uh, creatives doing books, making music, or having a seminar, and we have all this dialogue, but then we cut it down like a podcast or something. We cut it down to like a half an hour thing but I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews. So I've interviewed uh, Adam Grant, Cal Newport. Um, a lot of this stuff is available on this YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Brown Damon or in my ink column at inkdamonbrown.com. Um, and I've interviewed these folks and half the time I'll have this half an hour great interview with them and they only use five minutes because my ink column's only 500 words. You know, because um, this video only allows, you know, 10 minutes, whatever the case may be. What happens to all that extra stuff? That bonus content can become what creates your passive income. That stuff is just laying there. We found this a lot in the journalism world. We still do because we'll get an assignment to do a 400 word piece. Not that much, 400 words is short. 
and we'll end up interviewing 20 people. Not exaggerating. Not all of it's gonna get in there. What do we do with the leftovers? We talk about that a lot, again, in the passive writer specific to, to journalists and authors, but that also applies to any type of creatives. What are you doing with your excess stuff? Keep in mind that everything multiplies, everything compounds, including apathy. So if there's something that you wanna pursue and you've been sitting on it, that passion can go away. There's ideas that I have, I think my box, oh, it's right here. I have a box full of ideas, index cards, again, back to the big ideas, a little piece of paper that I never pursued, or I did pursue for a little while and I lost momentum and I moved on. There's a certain amount of passion and movement that will never come back, and that's okay. As I talk about in another TED Talk, why you should strive for good enough, there's a graveyard of things that I never pursued. I've made peace with that, at least as much as possible. But half of those things I ended up not finishing because I slowed down too much. I took on too much. I wasn't taking the little risks. I was trying to do the whole enchilada. It doesn't make any sense. And in that course, I ended up losing momentum for it. And when I lost the momentum, then the idea was lost. Elizabeth Gilbert talks about this quite a big, but quite a, quite a big, quite a bit in her book, Big Magic. Fabulous book, I highly recommend it. I actually quote it quite a few times in Built From Now, Deluxe Edition, which is available now. Uh, but she talks about ideas, uh, having, having a life and having a spirit. And if you don't mess around with them for too long, the spirit goes away. Same thing with apathy. If you believe that you're not worthy of the financial riches that you're supposed to get from your career, if you're not worthy of connecting and making an impact on audiences and make an impact on the greater world, that's gonna multiply over time. It's like compound interest. A lot of stuff, a lot of this energy can go back to what we think about as money, but it doesn't matter what the, what, what the resource is. In fact, money is just another resource. So that could be your time, your energy, your focus, your agility, how you adjust to things. I'm gonna talk about build from now. But if you end up going in the wrong direction, if you're not taking steps towards the world you wanna create, it's really easy for that to compound too. So think about investing your ideas. You're planting seeds and you're building something greater. That's it. And the way that there's money with compound interest with money is compound interest with your time and your energy. And I would not be talking to you today if I didn't take these little tiny, little, little tiny baby steps, quite literally, when I was taking care of our first baby many years ago. If you want more insight into habits and routines that can help you on your journey and in getting into this vesting, be sure and check out my playlist. It's at youtube.com slash brown damon. It's called uh, Successful Routines and Habits. And it's some of the best routines that you could that you can find from people who are innovating in their respective industries. Be sure and check it out. If you're enjoying the program, be sure to subscribe, like, share with us with fellow uh, side hustlers, solopreneurs, people who are on the journey with you because we can always do more together. Until next time, remember you can bring your worth that you can always build from now.